on this week's Gadget Show Web TV. John seeing the big picture with the Gigapan Epic Pro, I bring you this week's tech news and run down this year's must-have gadgets for festival season. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. I'm Pollyanna Woodward. Now later in the show, I'll be revealing some of the gadgets you have to pack if you're off to any of the music festivals this year. But first, you may remember last year that the Gadget Show tested a very clever photography gadget called the Gigapan Epic. So when John found out that they had released the Gigapan Epic Pro for DSLRs, he couldn't wait to get his mitts on it. But did it leave a big impression? Now, this is the Gigapan Epic Pro, and the basic principle of it is the same as the other Gigapans. It allows you to take a shot of a lovely panorama like this skyline of Birmingham from the top of the custard factory, but instead of taking it as one shot, it takes it as a load of individual images by rotating the camera gradually round, and then using its supplied software, it builds it up into a giant gigapixel-sized image, so you can see the whole wide panorama, and at the same time, zoom in to individual details. It comes with a lithium-ion rechargeable battery that uh, powers the motors that move the camera about to build up the panorama. And each charge is good for about 5 to 15 gigapans. Now, it's crucial to get your camera level to start with. Helpfully, there's a spirit level on top to make sure you do. It works on a similar principle to the smaller gigapans. You tell it what sort of lens you've got on your camera by calibrating the field of view. I'm using a 200mm lens here, but you could have something longer if you want more detailed images. Now the basic principle is that you tell it where the top left of your panorama is, you tell it where the bottom right is, and it does the rest. It sorts out how many shots it needs to take. You can also set it to do a 360 degree panorama, then you just have to tell it the top and the bottom. New panorama. I think I'll include a bit of the building. That's okay, that's good, I'll go for that. Then you move around and set the bottom right. Now, there's a few choices to make. Do you go for autofocus or not? Tricky, because sometimes the autofocus might not work properly and that frame of the picture won't be quite right. I've gone for manual focus on this, but I've gone for a small aperture so as to get quite a good depth of field. There it is at the bottom of the field of view. OK, done. Field of view set. It knows now what it can see in each shot. Right, well, that should be 150 pictures. You can actually have a preview of it, but I think I'll get straight into it. Let's go. When the gigapanning has finished, you transfer all your stills to your computer, select the shots you want to build your gigapan out of, and set it to work. Or, and this is what the company will hope you do with it, upload it to their website. They're quite evangelical, in fact, about what they believe gigapans can do for the world by encouraging us all to share detailed images of our surroundings with each other. They reckon we'll all get to understand each other a lot better. As for the Gigapan Pro itself, it has to be said relatively few images deserve the Gigapan treatment, ones you can appreciate as wide panoramas and at the same time have all the detail that's worth zooming into. And also, one of the smaller models in Gigapan's range will also take a light digital SLR and a light long lens. So whether it's uh, worth making that extra investment in the very substantial Gigapan Epic Pro really it would depend on how much gigapanning you're intending to do. Whatever though, it is hugely enjoyable. Right, it's time for the news. And first up, queuing, cheering and high-fiving at 8am on a weekday morning could only be the launch of the Apple iPhone 4. Sporting an all-new design, state-of-the-art retina display and improved HD video camera, Apple claim that this is the biggest leap since the original iPhone. The technology, however, doesn't come cheap. And if you're wanting to get your hands on a 16 gigabyte SIM free phone, you're looking to part with about 499 pounds. And if you want the 32 gig model, you're going to have to part with 599 pounds. However, if you do plan on getting the iPhone 4 on contract, you'll be pleased to know that most of the network providers, including O2, Orange, T-Mobile, Vodafone, and three. 
surprisingly enough, we'll actually be offering you discounts on the phones, but you're going to be tied in for at least 18 months. And if you want our opinion on whether the iPhone 4 lives up to its hype, you can expect a Web TV first look when Mr. John Bentley gets his mitts on it. Next up is one of the most useful and handy gadgets in the world. It's the 3 Mobile MiFi. It's been updated to be even better. The MiFi is a small battery powered device that converts your 3G signal into a Wi Fi signal. So if you want to connect your devices to the internet, you can do it on the move. So what's better than the MiFi? Well, that would be the MiFi too. Coming out on the 2nd of July, the successor is an improvement across the board. With simple controls, bright OLED display, and improved power consumption, it is a welcome change for anyone that experienced the original. Pricing starts at £49.99 if you want to pay as you go. However, you could get the modem for free or cheaper if you decide to enter into a data contract at just £9.50 a month. Now, if you've been lucky enough to bag yourself a ticket to Glastonbury this year or any of the big music festivals, you're guaranteed to have a great weekend of live music. But you're not guaranteed to have great weather or a weekend free of camping mishaps. So if you want to come out of it unscathed, or bone dry at least, then you might want to make a little bit of room in your rucksack for a few handy bits of tech. These are our top five festival gadgets. Okay, if you're hitting the festivals this year, you're gonna need more than a pair of wellies and a poncho. This isn't some laid back country weekend. And if you're like me and have no idea about camping, luckily, tech can come to the rescue. And number five is the moon tent. This is one of the latest pop-up tents on the market. If you hate poles and pegs, then this one's gonna be right up your street. It comes in this compact 50 centimeter bag. And if you want to pop it up, I can tell you, extremely, extremely easy. <sighs> so if I can do this, I definitely know that you can. it's the Kodak Play Sport. If you think you're going to forget more than what you'll remember this festival season, I definitely say it's worth getting one of these. It's a simple one push button recording. Hello cameraman, how are you doing? Oh, bit of a close up there. The other great thing is it actually gives you five megapixel stills, but best of all is it's waterproof up to 10 feet, so it can handle anything a festival has to throw at it. Whether or not that's spilled beverages, muddy puddles, or accidents, it doesn't make a difference. It really is the rolling stones of camcorders. It just keeps going and going. And number three, it's the Sportbrella. British festivals are known all too well for their unexpected torrential downpours that happen all too often. So if you're thinking about hanging out and just lazing around all day, you'll probably want to get yourself one of these. The SKLZ Sportsbrella is basically a half tent, half umbrella that assembles in just a few minutes and comfortably shelters two festival goers for free to squeeze. And of course, if the heavens open, water runs off it, like water off a duck's back. Um, not quite like that. <laughs> And number two is the power strap. You might be able to spend three days partying, but I'm sure your smartphone won't. This is the most portable way for you to carry around a battery pack with its lithium ion battery. You're able to charge devices such as mobile phones, MP3 players, and even handheld gaming devices. Now I've got an iPhone with me, so I'm gonna pop that on charge just there. So the iPhone's charging, but if you've got the likes of maybe a Sony Ericsson or even a Nokia, there are many adapters in here that pretty much will suit most of the devices you're going to use. The power strap will give you about three hours talk time on a mobile and about eight hours on an MP3 player. So if there's a band on you really don't want to listen to, charge up the mobile and get yourself on Facebook. And number one, it's Tent Finder. So it's the end of the day and you have no idea where your tent is. It's anywhere in that melee of canvas. Well, I don't really have that problem because mine's orange and it's sat there on its own. However, I'm sure that you probably would. And if I did, I'd definitely use this app. Tent Finder is an app for the iPhone that lets you photograph your tent, record its GPS coordinates and save them for later. At the end of the day, you can click Find and it uses Google Maps and an on-screen compass to lead you right back to where you pitched up. Well, that brought me straight here. That works a treat. Love that. 
Well, that's all we have time for, but we will be back next week with more tech news and reviews. However, in the meantime, you can check out our Facebook and Twitter pages for links to the latest updates. Bye for now.